Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And today we're gonna to have a great show. Dr. Chris Reinhardt, who is the feedlot extension specialist for the state of Kansas, is gonna join us. We're gonna talk about heat stress in beef cattle and feed yards and beyond. Stay tuned for the show. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. It's great to have you here, Dr. Reinhardt. Dr. Chris Reinhardt is the Extension Feedlot Specialist for the state of Kansas, and he's a good friend and colleague, and we snagged him today to stop by, and we're going to talk about heat stress in, in feeder cattle. And it's one of those things that's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and how bad. That's exactly right, especially here in the center of the U.S. It's going to get hot. It always does. Yep. So when you're starting to talk about heat stress, because, you know, cattle, um, you know, they seek shade and they, they get in the ponds and the different things to this nature, but what are some of the things that are driving heat stress? And I mean from if I'm standing there trying to look at the weather radar or I'm looking at a weather report, what are some of the things I need to be focused on? There's really four things and I'll add a fifth. The first is obviously the actual outs outside temperature. Second is the relative humidity. Third is the amount of wind or breeze that's available. And fourth is the amount of direct sunlight and, and by reverse, the amount of cloud cover that's out there. But the fifth one is how many consecutive days of really stressful conditions we have in a row. Okay, so it can be a heat building effect in these animals, not necessarily a one real hot day and, and, and cause issues. Exactly, and, and the more of these days we stack up one on top of another, especially if it doesn't cool down at night, we can expect some, at very least, uh, very poor performance from the cattle and, and, and beyond. And, and, and in the more humid areas as well, we have uh, less of a chance of those animals to recover. We get to those arid uh, climates out in, in western Kansas, west Texas, and things to that, desert type, uh, low humidity, really cools off in the evening compared to those sticky Midwest summer nights. As we get from the middle of Kansas, the middle of Texas on east, that's where the humidity really becomes oppressive. Yeah. So when we're talking about temperature, relative humidity, and, and wind speed, those are the three components that make up what we call the thermal heat index, right? Correct. And so as heat goes up, as humidity goes up, we have an increase in kind of like um, wind chill, the opposite of wind chill. Exactly. You know, but uh, how do we use that? A real easy figuring is I like to stop working cattle when the blend of heat and humidity is really uncomfortable for us as human beings. We can do the, the complicated formula, uh, but if it's, if it's extremely warm and even if there's humidity, but if there's a nice 10 mile an hour continuous breeze, the cattle are going to remain relatively comfortable. It's when the humidity goes up and the breeze shuts off that the cattle will really struggle. So that's when we got to start making some management decisions and, and uh, things in our day-to-day -day management systems or processing crews. We're going to have to make some changes. Great points. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Dr. Reinhardt about heat stress and feeder cattle. You're watching Doc Talk. We're glad you joined us. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work it is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years and there's no reason for us to look for any other service.
Through the generosity of Dr. Eva Gardner and Dr. Dan Thompson, Kansans now have the opportunity to support the wildfire relief effort by purchasing a signed and numbered print of the original painting, A Walk Through Henry's Dreams, by Dr. Gardner. This gallery quality print is only $200. Order your print today online or call 785-273-5115. Please help support the Kansas Livestock Foundation Wildfire Relief Fund. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Doc Talk, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meets in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeets.com. Welcome back to the show, folks. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, and I'm joined by Field uh, State Feedlot Extension Specialist, Dr. Chris Reinhardt, who is a Associate Professor over in the Department of Animal Science and Industries. And we spend a lot of time on the road. We were just out in Scott City. We've been out in, in different parts of the country. Um, we're talking about heat stress. It's that time of year, Doc. It's, I know. And when we start heading into summertime and, and things like that, I hear people say, well, probably won't get hot this summer or <laughs> might not get cold this winter. But guess what? It does, doesn't it? Every year. And, and really, there's one of the things we love about agriculture is it's different every day. But the other thing we love about agriculture is it's the same every year. We just have a short memory. That very short. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about uh, one of the things I wanted Chris to address with us today is talk about clinical signs and the subclinical signs of, of heat stress. So let's start out with the clinical signs. Well, this is an animal that's obviously had enough um, fun in the sun and 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 now we're talking it's in in heat stress mode so what are some of the things that you would gauge just looking across the herd it, depending on which end of the scale you want to start with doc but as soon as we start to see the sides of cattle moving up and down especially rapidly we know that animal has entered into yeah, technically the the term is heat stress they may not be uh, their life isn't in jeopardy or anything to that nature but they're clearly having to expend energy just to cool off. So they're going to be panning and, and uh, you know, I didn't know. I mean, cattle do, that's how they cool their body, it's through the panning. But, uh, you know, the other thing is cattle have sweat glands. Yes. And I, I did not know that until we were studying a, a deal on anatomy. And the, their sweat glands are located in the armpits just in, and in the crotch area just like humans. And, and um uh, so, you know, there, there's that opportunity to cool as well. That panting, it's like you say, their evaporating moisture uh, is a lot more efficient to get rid of heat than, than the sweating does, but, but both are critical. You bet. You bet. So, so those are some of the clinical signs that we're going to see in these animals. What about the subclinical signs? I mean, what are some of the things you may not notice, you know, just driving up and down the feed alleys on a day-to-day -day basis or, or by your show steers? on a day-to-day -day basis, but these animals, what are some of the subclinical signs? Well, the thing we can do as cattlemen is sort of step out, out step outside our own comfort zone and, and literally say, if I'm uncomfortable, what about that 1,300 pound black hided animal standing out in the sun all day long? They're probably uncomfortable. Even if that side isn't rapidly moving, we know they're having to sort of turn on some systems within their metabolism to get rid of excess heat. And the the thing we need to remember about that is, as beef producers is that's costing performance. Sure. So, so clinically, we can see the animals panting, succumbing to the heat. Subclinically, it's going to be through the loss of performance. Exactly. They will eat less when they're hot and uncomfortable. Frankly, their body is saying, I don't need a lot of extra energy. So they're going to back off on feed, but then they're also going to burn energy just to try and stay cool. Great. After the break, we're going to talk more with Dr. Reinhardt about how to alleviate some of the heat stress in these cattle. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're really glad that you joined us. 
The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. I'm Dr. Kip Lukasevich with Production Animal Consultation. Today's BQA Tip of the Day is proper storage of your syringes. With our processing syringes, one of the, the common things that we find is that the syringes are hanging on the wall uh, where sometimes the, the, the area can be dust filled and, and dirty. So the best place to actually store syringes is either in the freezer, your vaccine syringes is either in the freezer or in the refrigerator. Uh, the reason for that is, is that there's nothing that grows in a freezer. It's, it's dust free environment, no bacteria and no mold will grow at that temperature. In a refrigerator, the, the, there can be molds that do grow and so if we're using automatic refill syringes, just make sure that you change the tubing on those syringes at least on a weekly basis so that no mold buildup or residues uh, form in there that will harm your vaccines when you're processing. And that is the tip of the day. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Here's another gardening tip with Annette Jackson from Jackson's Greenhouse. Well-designed container flower gardens bring beauty to your home, at your entry, on your patio, or placed in a special spot in your landscape. Let Jackson's help you select the correct plant combinations which will add the color and style you need and that will survive the summer to provide beauty till frost. Our annual mix or match flat clearance is going on now. A flat of 12 four packs is just $19.99. Similar savings on premium proven winter annuals too. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Doc Talk brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff Progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson from the College of Veterinary Medicine here with Dr. Chris Reinhardt, who is an associate professor over in the Department of Animal Science and Industries here at Kansas State University. And State, State, and Chris is our state feedlot extension specialist. And uh, Chris, we've been talking about some of the clinical signs, some of the subclinical signs, but there can be a point in time with these animals where it's an emergency situation. And and so what are those animals going to look like that, that are in dire straits that really need emergency treatment right now? I like your word emergency, Doc, because these animals we're going to describe, they're on the verge of potential death. They're, ex they're doing everything in their power to get rid of heat, but unfortunately all those systems are actually generating a bunch more heat. These are the animals you'll see standing, sometimes over top of the water source, uh, they've got posty legged they're trying to uh, expand their chest capacity and their mouth is gaping open and they're heaving uh, in and out as fast and as hard as they can especially big uh, heavy black hided cattle uh, it's time to intervene and fast well and, and you know we've all seen these animals and 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 uh, you're right it's it's an emergency situation it's something that you can't develop the plan for these animals when it happens. You need to think ahead um, to when this is going to happen. And we always encourage that you work with your, your uh, veterinarian to make sure that you have that emergency uh, plan in place for when such a catastrophe will, will happen. Now, um, Chris, when, when, what are we wanting to do with these animals? We've got to get their core temperature down as fast as possible and that'll most likely involve getting a water hose on the back of these cattle. Uh, secondly, can I get them to shade? 
or can I get shade to them? Uh, again, I keep talking about black hided cattle. It makes a huge difference uh, how dark hided the cattle are. They're absorbing a tremendous amount of sunlight. Again, we mentioned previously multiple days in a row. They might not have had a chance to cool down in between those episodes. We've got to get them cooled down. Yeah. So, so shade, water. Um, we've we've built water baths. Get water tanks. Get fluids in them. Different things of that nature. Another another treatment that that uh, I've heard recently um, for these animals, and we had a case with a show steer going down at a fair in, in heat exhaustion. Actually treating them with a with a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, um, something like dexamethasone, has been utilized in emergency situations as well to lessen that core body temp. Um, but uh, you know these things are all things that that are that are good to mention. Anything else on these critters or? Anecdotally, uh, it's good to get water baths out there. Make sure you're getting a metal tank out there. The cattle, especially if they're under extreme heat stress, they're going to want to get in it. And if it's not made of the right materials, they'll tell it, tear it apart in seconds. And so all your, all your hard work and money went for nothing. So get a big, round, sturdy tank out there. They'll use it. We've learned that with the, with the rubber tanks where they've, they've just jumped in them and uh, gone over the sides. So um, I think seeing it, getting it, uh, getting temporary shade up, um, you know, are all things. Sometimes though, getting the wound, ground wet and humidity, raising humidity can be counterproductive. So you want to be really careful on the animals that you pick. You're watching Doc Talk. We're going to come back after the break and we're going to talk about some preventative measures for heat stress. Thanks for joining us. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Julia Simons grew up in Maryland and earned her master's in food systems and ag policy before attending veterinary school at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Her goal is to provide high quality veterinary care to livestock while protecting the food supply and the animal's well-being. She would like to work in the Northeast for a dairy or mixed animal practice after graduation. Hey, I'm Clark Victory. I grew up right here on this little ranch near Chelsea, Oklahoma. Uh, roped and ranched all my life and uh, a few years ago I had an injury that created a what they call a frozen shoulder in layman's terms. It got to the point that I, I couldn't reach, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything. After speaking with the surgeon in Tulsa he finally told me that he could make my uh, shoulder better if he did surgery but he absolutely couldn't fix it. I decided that you know maybe I better listen to my friend John and and I called Kansas Regenerative Medical Center. I talked to Patrick Farley and was just excited about the whole aspect of going up there and having the opportunity to focus on getting better. The next morning at 8.30, went into the clinic, did the stem cell replacement. By 12.30, my wife and I had had lunch and was driving back to Chelsea. I feel better. I, we work around here. Some days we work pretty hard around here. And like any older guy does, I get pretty sore, pretty tired, but my right shoulder doesn't get sore. It's, it's like a baby's arm. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Hey there folks, I'm Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. On behalf of myself and the staff at Drovers, I'd like to invite you to our Cow-Calf Cowboy College in West Des Moines, Iowa on June 20th and 21st. We're going to have speakers such as Mike Appley, Tom Knopfsinger, Chris Reinhardt, and Mr. Dave Nichols from Nichols Angus Farm. For registration, please visit DroversCowboyCollege.com or call us at 1-877-482-7203. I hope to see you all there.
Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Chris Reinhart, and we are from Kansas State University, and we're talking about heat stress. We've talked about signs, clinical signs, thermal heat index, emergency situations, you know, Besides ceasing and desisting and desisting the activity, so we're going to stop processing, we're going to stop moving cattle during the hot times of the day. What are some of the other preventative measures that you like to enlist in the home pen or, or that to, to prevent heat stress? Well, we talked previously about black hide and cattle. The black hide and hair simply absorbs a ton of light out of, out of the uh, of sunlight. And if we can get those cattle shaded, especially the big cattle, if we can focus on one area of the feed yard, it's gonna get those cattle that are 60 days from market under some shade. And, and that's usually enough to keep them from moving into mildly uncomfortable into clinical extreme emergency situation. So uh, shade, uh, what, what are some of the other water? Water is a big one. We've got, as you mentioned before, let's prepare for summer. It seems to come every year. Uh, Intake of cattle during normal cool uh, circumstances will be about three times the amount of dry matter the cattle are eating. Uh, During the hot summertime, it's going to be more like five times. So not quite double uh, their water consumption during those hot periods. We've got to prepare for that and make sure we're going to have adequate water supply. And we always said, you know, if we don't have enough water pressure, enough water tank space, things of that, you're going to have to make sure that you get a tank that you can increase the water pressure above ground if you have deep wells. And, and then some of the other things is if cattle are bunching around the water tanks, you may have to put a silver tank out in the pen and, and fill it up to get by during these heat stress moments. Cattle, especially the bully cattle, will hover over those water sources, not because they're needing more to drink, they're simply uh, breathing over that cool air. It's cooler. What about wind? How could I increase ventilation of cattle that are in a feeder pen? Two things. Number one is mounds. We know how great mounds are during wet and muddy conditions. Uh, Something somebody smarter than me once said, cattle don't lie. They can't lie. And when you see cattle using shade, or when you see cattle using mounds, they should be telling you something. They're more comfortable in those areas. And the thing about mounds during the summertime, even if it's dry, is cattle can usually get up on top of that mound and find a little bit of breeze. Yeah, the cattle will face the breeze in the summer and they look away from it, put their tail in the breeze in the winter. Um, what about weeds, wind breaks? If you've got wind breaks in place, I understand in the northern climate where we're fighting that January blizzard, uh, they're important, but in the in the Midwest where we operate, I'm not sure windbreaks are nearly as important as w- in the in the winter time as not having them and having access to wind is during the summertime. Cool. Well, I appreciate you being here on the show. You've really brought a light to a very serious uh, uh, situation, and just through that prevention, don't work cattle when it gets hot. Get them some shade. Get them water. Build some mounds for ventilation. Knock down those weeds and windbreaks prevent some heat stress. It's important. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Remember, if you want to know more about what we do here at the College of Veterinary Medicine, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember to always work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. You've joined me today on Doc Talk. We're sure glad that you did, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.
to see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com.